and we are very happy to welcome Dr. Mohammed Bhutri for being present here on behalf of the Vice Chancellor Mr. Anthony Chapman who has been a great support and we are trying to do fairly interesting innovative things that we can do together. The Scottish Qualification Authority has also been working with us and we have John McMorris, Alistair Shaw and Martin Way. Martin Way. Uh, with us and they've been here before and uh, that's another great strength of support to us. Uh, the Qualification and Assessment International UK uh, is represented by uh, Sir John Kerr, uh, Director and Chief Executive and is also the Extra X Awards and uh, we've done it around the topic qualifier of the learner within. Uh, I've known John from earlier times and I'm very happy that uh, Neil Kemp who was with the British Council when I was with the Open University is here, uh, Jeff is here from Assessment Tomorrow and so on. we find that this is now something which is becoming really conversations and explorations. We are really not talking of some people who are just a know-it-all who are speaking to the rest of the audience that this is what you should be doing and preparing for but we are all in it together. So the, what we talk about as the sage on the stage disappearing to become the guide by the side or a co-explorer is what we are doing. We've done this in the format of the conference also. In some of the earlier conferences we were really personally we were very bedazzled with all the speakers we had and it almost became a speaking event. And then some people felt that they didn't have enough time to participate. So here this time every session, almost half the session is for interactive discussions and we hope that we will be able to get a lot more interesting things. The flow of the conference is also in a manner which reflects a continuity and a story. Uh, in most conferences you will see that the first session is a ceremonial session, there's a couple of ministers, there is that, and shortly after the tea break you find that audience is almost gone and post lunch very few remain. But here the real thing is happening towards the end of the thing, because what we are building is session one talks about English language, session two talks about higher education, session three talks about skills, and session four is all about putting it all together. So how do you get all the stakeholders put together and therefore if you know the answer to this question only at the end of the day when we have discussed and deliberated what kind of models we will have for 21st century learning. I think this is something which is very important because uh, we are talking to John Kerr on the way and for a long time uh, people have been a little bit skeptical. You know you are all talking ICT, ICT in education for almost a decade or two. And uh, my wife who is a principal of a school I overheard saying, I'm sick of these fellows telling us about IT in schools again and again. And I think the point that one is trying to say is that while it may have looked that for several years we talked about the promise of ICT, it was not ever realized. It's the next five years which is going to make that happen. And I think this is important for us to understand <coughs> that we are in the kind of vibrations of a transformation and these things take time. Uh, the closest analogy you have from physical phenomena, and we all see better conditions now. Now, you can, I was in London two weeks ago, nice bright sunny days, and a couple of days later it's <coughs> snowing. How does it happen? This is something which happens, which uh, Malcolm Godwell calls as a tipping point. Uh, people from a more physics chemistry background call it a phase change. It's like you boil water. It becomes hot water, hotter water, hotter water, at some point of time it becomes steam. You have cold water, you try to cool it, cool it, it's cold, cold, colder water, sometime it becomes ice. Now, for a long time you can say, but nothing is changing. I think this next five years, are the years when the real change will happen. And this has happened across, whenever any technology came, the first stage in which technology was adopted was just to have it as an add-on. So, in India, when in banks, computers were about to come, all the dock workers in Calcutta went on strike, they did not allow the computer to land. And when the PCs came, the computer came somewhat, they said, we are not a computer, we are an advanced ledger posting machine, we will just print ledgers for you. <coughs> now having got that thin end of the wedge, an advanced ledger posting machine, today you know they have internet banking, you have cashless banks, you have complete things where you don't really, and you almost have a situation where the statement advertises, where is my nearest branch, it says it's in your pocket. I think that's what's going to happen to learning. You are no longer going to talk about where is my next school or institution, it's all in your pocket. Mobile, tablet, mobile based internet, cloud computing, Facebook, 
social media, this will now transform more or less how traditional banking has been transformed to internet banking, you will see some of this happening. Neil Kemp was talking about open education resources taking on a momentum. We are talking about an open education resources university. You have heard about the MIT putting up its course on the internet for everybody. And you may not realize that the professor from MIT who teaches linear algebra has 7.2 million followers. Much more than Kodavari D or whatever else that you know about. So people who are teaching linear algebra can be celebrities around the world is something which is amazing. And I don't want to be frivolous, but maybe we are seeing the era of rock star teachers and rock star professors coming up. So, why I am saying this is not just because I dream of it or I have an imagination. Bill Gates in 2010, August 2010, 6 August 2010, actually said that in five years from now, the best education will come from the web. What I am adding is, it will come from the mobile web, it will come through tablets and mobiles, it will come anywhere. And just imagine, why should we be in a freezing room like this with this bright sunshine outside? So tomorrow's education will be on the beach, it will be, you can be on a beach in Goa or wherever you like, it could be on the Dal Lake in Srinagar, it could be while you are boating or wherever, and learning happens. The expression for this that has been coined is very interesting. There is a thing called WYSIWYG which you would have heard which came when graphical user interface came. So they said what you see is what you get. The new word is win winning win winning is W-I-N, W-I-N-I, what I need and when I need it. So that's the new education model that people want. They want something which is what I need, when I need it, and not four years of college degree education at the end of which I will learn something which is useful and so on and so forth. So I think with this word I'd like to uh, welcome you once again, to share with you that we are on to something very exciting. It doesn't end with the day to day. Tomorrow, we put our money where our mouth is. So we say, if all this is going to happen, where are the teachers? I've often said in half zest that teachers will be afraid of entering the classroom tomorrow. Because when you have young children, all with their tablets and mobile, they are asking so many questions. Teacher, why is the rainbow like a pole, not like a straight line? Teacher wants to run away from the class. It's happening in higher education. You say, I've learned this when I was in my PhD. He says, forget it, I know whatever. It's there and happening now. So we have to create the new age teacher and we are doing two small workshops. I'm saying small because the number of people who can attend them is very limited, but they are something with huge impact. The first one is on creative and innovative methods of teaching. Everybody is talking about innovation elsewhere. What about in teaching itself? And the second is on mentoring and coaching because no longer is a teacher just a mere transmitter of information. It's a builder of the learner in entirety and therefore the coaching and mentoring roles of teachers become very important. So we are doing something to demonstrate how these things can be done and there are two workshops tomorrow. Many of you are already registered. Uh, I don't think any fresh registration might be possible but if you talk to the organizer, they can talk about similar events being done in other parts. So, uh, with this I request uh, Mohammed first to make his uh, share his thoughts and convey the message from <coughs> his university and then Bill Ramel to take as much time as he needs. We'll stop the work for a while and he will do whatever is required. Thank you.